Like it or not, more photos are taken on mobile devices like your smartphones than are on cameras these days. And as somebody smart said, Mr. Jarvis, the best camera is the one that you have with you. Today I wanna to run through 10 tips to get the best out of your mobile phone camera. Please take a moment to check out my second book, Public Bodies, art nude photography shot in public places in dozens of cities all around the world. The link is in the caption below where you can find out the concept, more information and pick up your copy. Now let's jump into the tips. Tip one, you can use your torch as a continuous fill light. So you can see the shadow that's been cast there from right to left, turning on the flash it does a fairly good job of filling in the, the shadows in darker situations. You wouldn't want to use this in direct sunlight and keep in mind it is a weak and small light source so it's going to give hard shadows but also be kind of ineffective. Best used indoors. Tip two, in the same way that you can use a polarizing filter on the front of your DSLR lens, you can use it on the front of your smartphone lens. And if you don't have a proper filter, if you have polarized sunglasses, you can do that too. So here's a shot taken with the iPhone 6 Plus outdoors. Polarizers work best on bright sunny days. That's just without any polarizer. Then they're adding the polarizer and you can see the difference that it's making. Here's the first test shot using the polarizer, but you need to rotate them to get the best effect. That's why it's called a circular polarizer. There we go at maximum effect. You can see it's really making the colors punch. Now there we go, that's the glasses. And then putting that on, you can see it has a similar effect, but minor prescription glasses. So you you can see the right hand side is a little blurred. Next up is avoid zooming wherever possible. Most of the smartphones don't have an optical zoom, so when you're zooming in, you're just cropping into your image and you will start to lose quality. Tip four, pay close attention to your highlights and shadows. The sensor on your camera phone has much less dynamic range than on your digital SLR, so if you go too dark or too light, it's really easy to clip the file. Tip five, if you are gonna use your flash on the camera phone, stay close to your subject. It has a really limited range, especially outdoors. You can't expect something like this to be overpowering the sun. Tip six, be aware that on a lot of the phones, your exposure and focus are going to be locked together. If you're on iPhone, the latest update eight has given you the ability to separate that out. And there's also apps out there. But if your point to touch where you're going to focus is also metering, you wanna make sure you're doing it on the most important area of the shot, such as somebody's face. Otherwise, if it's metering for the whole scene, you may end up getting too dark of a shot, especially if they're backlit. Tip seven, don't assume just because it's a tiny sensor in here that everything's going to be sharp. You still wanna pay attention to your focus. Take a look at these demos. Here, focusing on Jade. Justin in the background is blurred out. And then there, focusing on Justin, Jade is a lot softer. She's soft. Tip eight, use two hands for stability. Now, a lot of the cameras are starting to come out with optical stabilization like the 6 Plus, but for ones that don't, especially in low light, as the shutter speed drops you, it's easy to introduce uh, blur into your shot. So two hands, steady shot. Tip nine, just because it's an iPhone shot doesn't mean you're limited to just banging on a filter and going. It's worth editing your shots. I personally use Snapseed from Google for my editing. Give you a quick look. The Snapseed interface is so easy to pick up. You just open an image and then it's all just using slide motions. Opening up this shot that I took earlier today, you can see you can make really simple adjustments. You use up and down to change through the options in each one and then left and right to increase or decrease the intensity. You can crop with it keeping a certain aspect ratio or just do it freely. And there's all kinds of different tools including this drama edit and of course HDR. So here's the original image and then the final after that 10 second edit. And finally, number 10, just because you're taking the photos on your phone doesn't mean it's not real photography. So all of the usual lighting and composition and creative decisions are open to you and you wanna think about them if you wanna increase the overall standard of your work. If you wanna learn more about lighting and how you can start to take control of how your images are looking, check out my Take Control of the Light workshop at mattgranger.com forward slash light. Leave me any questions or comments. I'll see you soon.